Hello and welcome back to the Handstand Cast with me, Emmett Lewis, and my co-host, Mikhail Christiansen. And today we are joined by uh, two very special people for us. Uh, we have Eliza and Sonia from Motion Impulse. For those of you who don't know, Motion Impulse is the publishing company behind Handstand Factory and the podcast and general whip crackers for me and Mikhail getting our shit together. But they are here to talk about their new venture, the Handstand Press magazine, a new independent magazine for uh, all things hand balance, I suppose. How is it going, everyone? Thank you so much for having us. Very exciting to be here. Yeah, it's awesome to be here, and I love your intro music. Ah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of one of our favorite things is uh, chip tunes and dodgy video game music. So we had someone make the ultimate Final Fantasy factory hybrid music a while back. <laughs> <laughs> I think we actually gave them Final Fantasy music going, oh yeah. And, me- this. and Mega Man. And Mega Man. <laughs> yeah, we're still waiting for the video to accompany the music. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah we, we should. should uh, I think we should just make a video game like Mega Man, but you're balancing handstands. <laughs> <laughs> it's like starts off Inc- Incidentally, open. the guy that, that uh, is, is, is making the art actually also makes video games. Okay, he signed up. There you go, handstand video <laughs> game coming in. I know, we have video podcast coming soon. And another project. And another project. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. As if you hadn't enough on your table. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, first things first, I'd... First off, let's just tell us what is Handstand Press Magazine, briefly, and then I'd like to talk to you guys just about your own sort of individual stuff and practice and things like that. Sounds good. Um, well, the Handstand Press Magazine is... Uh, just coming into existence and which is why we're super happy to have the opportunity to speak to you guys about it now um, because it's essentially going to be a magazine that's only and all about hand balancing and it's a community-centered magazine so it'll feature voices from hand balancers and with that we mean from all walks of the practice so total beginners very advanced people And we kind of just want to um, give like uh, a connection point that's a bit slower paced than what you'd usually find on the internet because there's, I mean, the community is huge and we'll talk about that a bit more later. Um, But it's also very dispersed and it's, you know, there's a lot happening on Instagram. There's a lot happening on blogs. There's a lot, you know, there's podcasts. um, But at the same time, um, Sonia and I, when, when we started talking about it, we just got really excited about the idea of having it um, in print and having something that's a bit more timeless um, that can be kind of a connection point for hand balancers all over the world. Cool. Yeah, it's, it's going to be kind of like a melting pot um, because handstands, what we found is that the element or the discipline of hands, hand balancing is one that connects various um, sports and disciplines all around, like calisthenics, yoga, gymnastics, uh, the movement world. You know, there are so many different backgrounds that all come together through this new emerging discipline. Actually, it's not even new, but (laughs) it's kind of becoming its own thing. And we've seen that the interest has just gone up in the last couple of years of... um, just a general fitness movement world, people who come from a more mainstream yeah. background finding interest in handstands. So, yeah, we're super excited about it, and we're actually running a Kickstarter right now, no. which yeah. I don't know if we should already mention it, but... <laughs> <laughs> it actually launched yesterday. That, yeah, that's why I said it's it's just coming into existence. It's, it's being uh, crowdfunded at the moment. We're, we're hoping to get our first print run funded by hand balancers who want to know things yeah yeah that's no, kind of cool it's kind of interesting that we from our point of view i suppose because we have our producer who we know can kick a bit of ass but then we have sonia who we could possibly say was the first handstand journalist in the world in terms yeah, of uh, I know. <laughs> yeah people would know her from i don't know if you're listening to the show hopefully you know her if not check her out on her handstand diary where you have a lot of video interviews with basically a who's who in the hand balance world so it's kind of interesting that way that it's kind of taking fast mediums i suppose when we have video and instagram and all these kind of fast ones and putting it into a something that's a bit slower 
Yeah, it's interesting with print because um, it takes so much effort to produce just one issue and so much time. Because, like, we've been working on the first issue for the last three months or so, something yeah. like that. Um, gathering all the content, because obviously we're not putting it together all by ourselves. We're trying to get as many people involved as possible because it's supposed to be a magazine from hand balancers for hand balancers. Yeah. And um, just the nature of it taking so much time and effort and also the cost of printing it makes it a natural bullshit filter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. Like the threshold of posting something on the internet, everybody can do it. Everybody can just create their channel and put out whatever they want. But when you put in the risk of, you know, creating an actual magazine, it's different. Yeah. And I kind of like how it it just fits the medium so well. Hand balancing, I mean, everyone who's remotely into hand balancing knows that it's just a very long-term thing. If, if you're going to, to do it or or if you actually want to, you know, put considerable effort in. I mean, Mikael talks about this a lot um, and so, so does Emmett, obviously. Um, but the fact that if, if you have something that's slow by nature and it's very slow progress and it's very, you, you keep chipping away at it, you keep ch- chipping away at it. And especially when you're starting, if you go onto the internet and there's so much information, there's so much to filter through, there's so much... Um, very interesting discussion happening as well. I mean, the internet is a great place, and I know that Emmett Mikkel had a an episode on forums and social media and how yeah. that's kind of changed the discussion around handstands. Um, so it's by no means uh, a bad thing, of course, but we do love the idea of taking this very s- kind of long term practice and putting into into a long term medium such as print. I think it's kind of it's quite a cool project. I really look forward to seeing uh, what what directions you're taking it in, and uh, um, yeah, like what what types of. I mean, one thing, of course, um, is interviews of various people and hearing them uttering themselves and their kind of perspectives are interesting. But also, like what other things can be can it can be used for? Um, yeah, I'm I'm very really excited to just see see what what sort of uh, ideas you have around it since i haven't really haven't really i mean i haven't been involved in this, in this at all and uh, that makes me in, much more interested just to see <laughs> where, where it's gonna go i'm more interested in things i'm not involved in than the stuff i do <laughs> don't actually, worry Mikhail, true, we'll, we'll I, get you we'll get you <laughs> well actually i did interview you for the magazine but it's so long ago that you probably mm. forgot <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I, I do remember the, the 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 interview we did in Oslo, yeah? If that's the one you mean. No, 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 that was for what? Handstand Diary. That was a video. <laughs> no, I interviewed you for, um, I'm, I don't know if I'm supposed to give it away, but um, uh, let's, the let's first issue give contains people an some article. Insights, yeah, yeah. I think it's fine. The first issue con- uh, contains an article about shows in times of COVID. Mm-hmm. And I interviewed several professional hand balancers Write oh that right yeah and... that thing like i don't have a, a memory so <laughs> yeah now that you mentioned it yes we did we it did was have pretty a... late at night when we did the interview and yeah, we did have a conversation that i can remember <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was it actually was, an interview it was recorded <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 it's, it's, all, it's all good it's all good you also might have just um damn i don't know the word in english in german it's verdrängt Oh, mm. when you oh, kind yeah. of, like, what is the English word? It Sonia is, and I uh, are both also German speakers, so we communicate yeah. on, like, It's very two similar nor- in Norwegian. It's, um... I feel left out. What's it called? It's, a, it's kind of denial, but not really. Uh, right, yeah. 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 Maybe you're in denial about it. Suppression, because it was... or, like, when you suppress. Suppressed, uh, that's it. Yeah. Because it on. was right when we were going into the second wave, and things mm. started to get dark again so (laughs) maybe that was part of it that dark norwegian winter kicking in yeah and it's also going to be cool to see a lot of the the like the kind of uh like one one thing that i'm really tired of with the uh internet mediums and i mean this is i guess this is very very much kind of the um just uh, what's it called, a digital kind of fatigue 
of ha- of having to watch everything on a screen. Like how many thousand handstand pictures have I seen in the phone? How many have I seen on the wall? Like, yeah, I can I can probably count on one on one hand how many times I've seen an exhibition with actual pictures on the wall or something on print. I'm like and furiously taking notes for next project mm. handstand <laughs> exhibition. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you guys should get in touch with uh, Einar. He has a million billion. Oh, we yeah. have. We have. Yeah. We're well on <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. Nice. that's kind of one of the things I'm looking forward to is handstands. Obviously, as we know, we do it for the gram and it's a very it's a very visual performance skill as much as anything, as much as an internal skill and a physical skill. It There is a visual geometry that we engage in when we're doing it and we can define it. And it's kind of interesting, as Mika said, the digital fatigue is like, yeah, I've seen so much handstands and form checks and people doing stuff either on my phone or on my screen. But I have never held a handstand picture mm. or something like that. Yeah, I that's... actually have one. No, fuck, I gave it to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> that's very nice. I but, think uh, it's not only the getting information part. It's also about <laughs> connecting the Sorry. people because, no, honestly, if you are going to publish an article in a magazine, you can't erase it. Mm. Yeah. Once it's out there, it's out there. If you put something on the internet, you can erase stuff. It's so fast-paced. People probably won't even pay it attention because the context mm. is just very different. Yeah, it's, for sure. Oh, no, trust me. If you experience. put the wrong, if you say the wrong thing on the internet, people will still bring it up in seven years' time. That one time I mistaked internal for external rotation, people are like, what you said? I'm just like... <laughs> yeah in, in those cases it applies <laughs> right yeah. yeah anyway and i mean just just while we're we're a bit on the content of, of the actual magazine I, so sonia just um mentioned the article on shows in times of covid that is actually the only covid specific thing we have in the magazine and while mm-hmm. it is yeah. obviously a very you know prominent topic at the moment um it's also a, a topic that is so over prominent that I look forward to actually being able to put something out there that has absolutely nothing to do with it. Yep. Because a lot of times, um, and I think, I, I would almost say that Hamelance in this year has had a huge, um, even more of a boost than before because it's something you can do at home. It's something you can learn off the internet, which is amazing. Um, it's something that, you know, you're, you can get your coach onto Zoom and, and there you go, you're, you know, you're doing a handstand in your kitchen. Um, right. But at the same time, obviously, what we mentioned before is that with the very timeless medium, the idea is you have this magazine and if our crowdfunding is um, successful, you know, there there will be more issues. And then the idea of having like a shelf with magazines that come out three, four times a year and you'll have the, you know, oh, that's when I was training one arm that has, you know, those articles in it or something it's it's kind of like the way we envision it and we, we Sonia and I talked about this a few times is like if you're training and I mean what does Mikael say training should be like a tea party so then what do you do in your training parts if you're not <laughs> chatting to people you're on your phone but what if you mm. actually just have a really nice magazine that you can leaf through you know um Mikael was just just mentioned Einar um Echo Picks He's, he has beautiful photography and I love seeing it on my phone, but imagine you could see it in bigger. We we still have to actually uh, track him down for that, but we will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Reply, damn you, reply. Uh, yeah, I think this kind of, I think it, there is this interesting thing. It's something which just popped up recently, what I'm going to segue <clears throat> on to, because I think where it's these digital stuff isn't unique in some ways. You can infinitely make, say I have a JPEG or an image or an mp3 i can infinitely make copies of it and it's one of these things that's missing online but it's come up now as these nft tokens where like you can yeah, have I've seen that a token you can have a jpeg and a token that says this is the unique one that you can't copy and blah 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 but i think it's interesting with the magazine is like you're making i don't want to sound weird but you're making something real and it mm. exists and it's kind of <clears throat> it's almost like how would I say this? I suppose for me, it's like, it's when you can start seeing a subculture becomes real is when it gets a magazine <laughs> or when it gets a multiple mm-hmm. magazines. It get content that will survive. And like, I remember back from, say, 
the early days when I was inline skating. So I used to inline skate quite a lot, so do a little, but uh, it was my main thing for most of my teen years. Old, like I skated for a very long time, but there was no magazines until I was about 14 or 15. And then a few, two magazines came out. And that was the point when it's like, oh, even though like skating, like it was just when I got into the X Games and all this, and I was like, oh, this is actually a real thing that will survive. Mm. And that's kind of interesting. And it would have been like, if we think about other subcultures, we could think about like gaming, tabletop gaming, yoga, fishing, DIY, PC. Like I remember first kind of delving into PC and like Linux and all this. It was through a magazine and you'd get like programs that were, you had to type them out yourself to run them. But this was how I suppose the paper medium was the way of transferring and establishing a subculture. Because you could I think go. It's also, I think it's also healthy in the sense that, like, you can, um, or, I mean, of course, it's possible to do on a website or a blog or something like that. But, I mean, even, cause, like, because all, all of those mediums have gone, become faster and faster. And, to, like, actually, like, I had an anthropology lecture about that today, like, about, like, the various, um, how the various kind of user interfaces have changed from being kind of a, uh, from reading into this kind of intuitive touch and go kind of uh, things. Um, but I think for, um, now I've completely forgot what I was going to say. So <laughs> uh, speed of interface? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's gone. It's gone. So yeah. um, Something that you can also do on a website, but it's cooler in print. Oh, yeah, now I remember. <laughs> um, yeah, basically the point that like you can, uh, or like a blog can have a longer article, but I think that having more like substantial longer reads is, is something that's very nice and you can get to know people better and uh, you can get into depths that you won't necessarily do with like the the shorter term and uh, like kind of quick fix uh, posting that we're mainly doing nowadays and it's also cool then in terms of like like actual journalism because you you guys have to find you have to spend time finding a subject matter or a person or whatever that you want to write about, track them down, do all that work, transcribe it, and then make it into print. So I think that process alone is going to make it into yeah, something different to that at least like this, like it, it used to be the thing before, but like this, this particular community hasn't had any of that. So I think, I think it's going to be a very interesting thing. Yeah. We're yeah taking... I think that's a, sorry, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a really big point you mentioned there because uh, when you search for handstand related content on the internet, it's more about who's the better marketer, who knows how to navigate the internet and use it yeah. for their benefit mm. rather than who offers the best quality. And our role as journalists or as, um, you know, um, editors, what are we? <laughs> as editors, that's, yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Um, that's our job to look for the best quality and find the people who have something to offer and bring them all together in the magazine. Yeah. And I think one of the really fun things or the, the thing I've enjoyed the most actually is kind of the curating of it because there is so much, like the more Sonia and I started researching who, who we wanted to have on the pages, the more we realized it's infinite like the the people that have interesting yes. things to say the people that are doing interesting things the people that never talk about what they do yeah. um, and it gets really personal yeah. which is awesome you go in depth and once you have people writing it really gets into deep personal things yeah and I think I mean so the first issue we've kind of um, grouped it around or the the issue is going to be called common ground and it really is I think Sonia mentioned this earlier it, it really is because hand balancing plays a role in so many different disciplines um, the best known I'd say is probably uh, for one the circus uh, discipline of hand balancing but the, and then also gymnastics plays a big role but it's in so many others so Sonia I think mentioned calisthenics then yoga it's huge um, pole dance even has, has started doing hand balancing one hand on the pole one hand on the floor um, break dance break dance and I mean these are all I think Michael you, you actually initially came from break dance correct yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so it, it's it's 
a facet of so many different cultures. But then the fact that the internet has actually made it into this thing where there is now handstand-specific hashtags, there's handstand-specific groups, and and people meet there from all these different cultures. It's not only I'm a, a circus um, circus professional and I meet other hand bouncers in the circus hall, or I'm a yogi and I go to my yoga studio and that's where I learn handstands with other yogis. The internet actually makes, or kind of, I think, helps to bring all these different disciplines together in the a common goal of trying to learn a handstand. And that's what we're trying to showcase in this first issue. Mm. One one, yeah. one thought that I just got that I think would be very interesting, uh, not that I'm going to have a hand in, in all <laughs> what you guys do, but uh, Bring it uh, on. Like find <laughs> all the people that never utter themselves. I mean, there are so many. There yes. are so many. Like, I was just thinking like seven people ran through my head. It's like, hey, that this person just does their, like, I mean, it's either artists or people that just like to do their thing on their own. But they they aren't much about having an internet presence or banging on about how they do this and that. And you know, like I'm, I'm sure a lot of those people have an inter- like an interesting story to tell, and most importantly, a story to tell that you won't hear otherwise. Yeah, that's yes. definitely uh, this is the kind of I suppose the editing thing. It only goes like uh, the people you come across with the easiest or the soonest are the ones who are better at the internet. Mm-hmm. That's definitely one of these things where it's like oh. If you just, I don't know, I suppose if you think of a lot of subcultures, there's a lot of very enthusiastic, well-thought-out amateurs. Mm. People who, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> they, their main source of income or their main thing is something else. They do something else. But they're really enthusiastic about this. You get it in everything. Fishing, shooting, climbing, whatever. And these people can be very talented, very good. And they can have a lot of interesting things to say. But then at the time, like, they're just not going to do it because they're like, I don't need to stake my claim on the internet. But mm. it's kind of which, which used to be the case for circus. Yeah, still is the case for circus. I think circus people are very internet. Yeah, yeah on on yeah. Uh, on average, yes, for sure. But like, there's much more now than it was. But like, or and you still have these like insular communities you never hear from, <laughs> but they're better than you and everyone you know, kind of. <laughs> Surprise! There's like uh, there's actually a secret hand balance underworld that we don't even know about. You're just not good enough unless you're doing one finger for you. Uh, They're out there. Yeah. But that's actually something I've come across um, in several interviews of, with professional circus hand balancers is that they feel like they have to be present on the internet nowadays and they have to learn this in addition um, because that's just how our time works. So yeah. I think adding adding something of high value um will be a great addition yeah i mean it's also it's for, obviously for not for i don't know sorry yeah. go ahead <laughs> um, yeah it's i mean it's obviously not going to replace uh, you know all the stuff you can find on the internet there's so much good free content out there good paid content as well there's a whole range um but i think the the idea was also to showcase community in a way that's um not based on either just your skill level or just your know-how or just you know how famous you are in the on the internet but actually to you know talk to beginners as well like what is your experience as a beginner hand balancer do you have a community do you meet with people to stand on your hands you know what's what what does that look like what does that feel like it's it's really about um i think not so much the showing off but more the making it accessible to more people so that you know someone who yeah. i don't know is comes from let's say pole dance is super into pole dance saw someone doing a handstand and then starts looking for it and, and can actually see oh that is something i can do i can learn to stand on my hands and obviously you know there's so many good coaches out there and, and that that is encouraged and that is how, how you go but actually seeing hand balancing as a thing and as a hobby um or as a potential career um that I think is is one of the things that I'm really looking forward to cool. putting out there more. So, yeah. I have one question: Can you give us a sneak peek of some of the content? Maybe each of you could give us a, a hint of your favorite piece of content coming out in the first or second <laughs> issue. Crossword puzzle. Yours too. That's my favorite as well. 
it, it, it has like no value in terms of learning something. Or... Oh, it has huge value. <laughs> right. It has huge value. Um, I mean, we have yeah. so many. Uh, Sonia is really. Um, Sonia's been working. Sonia's our managing editor, and she's worked on so many amazing articles, and I can't wait for all of them. But the crossword, weirdly enough, is really one of those things where I'm like, I'm excited for this. This is someone that really mm-hmm. only someone that's into handstands will be able to do, but they're going to know right. immediately. That's that's mm-hmm. what I find great about it. It's really, it, it kind of mm-hmm. is like, oh, yes, you have spent time on the internet. You know the lingo and you're, you know. You're a nerd. You're a nerd. <laughs> you're a handstand nerd. Yes. No, actually, um, the most interesting thing probably about issue one is going to be the common ground segment. So our original idea was to showcase the perspective on hand balance from different backgrounds. So we had someone who, is, who was a um, professional gymnast talk about her handstand practice now because she turned into a hand balancer. And then we had a break dancer. And then we had, you know, we had several different backgrounds and we inter- showcased interview people anyways uh we got so much content that we couldn't fit it all into the first (laughs) issue and we decided to keep the segment common ground because it is so interesting to hear from people with different backgrounds and how they train and how they approach handstands yeah the more we were looking in terms of practice the more disciplines um, we also found that actually have handstands in them. Like we started out on right. be like four, five, six. No, there's so many. Yeah, you have uh, vaulting, you have high diving, you have um, acrobatics, like duo acrobatics, group acrobatics, um, all the different forms of dance. It's yeah. really vast. And just in terms of structure of, of the magazine, as, as Sonia was saying, like every issue is going to have one main feature part or one main theme, so Common Ground is going to be the first one, but then we'll have um, Community, probably as one that'll be recurring, because there's a lot happening, um, just in terms of, you know, showcasing events, showcasing um, different, you know, jam sessions, different, you know, sit, there's some cities that just have a very vibrant handstand scene, and kind of showing that, and even showing also, how can I make that happen in my own city? How can I have, a, like, yeah. meetups, start Create a meetup? a handstand hot spot exactly create a handstand and coffee jam exactly yes. um <laughs> and so that's that's kind of going to be the main feature of, of every issue but then we'll have segments that are recurring in every issue and one of them will be then common ground from now on but we also have uh, one of my favorites actually called weight shift um which will kind of showcase going from being an amateur hand balancer hobbyist to to becoming a professional to saying actually i want to quit my job and do this full time either as a coach or a performer or whatever um but also shifting weight from i am a professional um circus artist and i perform but i actually want to move into coaching and kind of showcasing people that have done that successfully and just talking about their journey in that in that sense so that's that's one of my favorite segments coming up yeah we have another really good segment. Actually, all our segments are good. <laughs> Let's just mention the nerd corner. Um, yeah. We have a segment called the nerd corner, and it's going to be for everything research. Uh, may it be scientific, may it be artistic, um, practice-based. It's going to showcase articles that are going to be written um, by other people because <laughs> we don't um actually that's not true we do research we actually have a survey going oh, we but do anyway, have a survey going yeah 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 anyway the nerd corner is going to be an interesting segment also for uh, to open up discuss- discussions basically yeah i think that's one of the the big facets of of the magazine that we want to bring forward it's like facilitating different opinions so, uh, so if I disagree with someone, I can write in you can a letter write to an the editor. Angry letter to the editor, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, and just just having that's you know, just enough to get like another hundred articles. That's just enough to get another hundred articles going. <laughs> Toe point is mandatory for handstands. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to write fight a really corner. Can we have a fight corner? 
I'm going to write a really long article on how the core is the most important thing, and then I'm going to ask Mikkel to write a reaction. <laughs> a rant action. <laughs> That's actually a topic you can have big discussions about. Yeah. Because core, what does that tell us? What do we mean by that? But that's something different to go <laughs> into in a different episode. Maybe. Just don't bring up the core discussion. The fight in the fitness industry of what actually defines the core ranges from everything that is in your arms, your legs, and your head, all the way to these very specific muscles inside your abdomen, and everything else is superfluous. And then everything in between. So, uh, yeah, core doesn't exist when we get to the core yeah. of it. Well, there we have it. That was the whole discussion. <laughs> in a nutshell. Uh, yeah. Now this is sounding really cool. So it's kind of one of these, i got to think of where to go next on this because we've covered a lot of it. Let's talk so, about our survey for a moment. <laughs> I don't yeah, know it's fun. If, if this podcast yeah. is going to come out soon enough so people can still participate. Yeah, yeah we can yeah. leave it up for a bit longer, I think. Could do a survey every month. Yeah. We just we just uh, thought about the idea of it would be really cool to know how how does the community actually train how how does it differ how people train um, so you you'd have you know full time circus artists such as Mikael who who obviously has a very has been training for for over ten years and has a very um, for himself working thing that he does and then you'll have a beginner who obviously will be training very differently and you have everything in between. So we came up with a quick, I think 10 or 12 question survey. And mm -hmm. we've, we put that out at the very start when, when we uh, put the Handstand Press magazine online as a, as a thing that you can find on Instagram and Facebook and such. And it's just a survey open to anyone who trains handstands. If is, that is something that you do, if you're listening to this podcast, you probably are doing that. Um, give us the info on what you do and all the results and ev all the charts and everything that come out of that survey will be showcased in issue one. What as comes a, out is handstand people don't rest. Oh, <laughs> well, that'll be interesting to see. <laughs> Mikael, have you taken our survey? Uh, no, well, uh, I haven't. I will send where, it to you. Where, where can I find it? It's if, on the website. It pops okay, up. Sweet. Yeah, okay. the handsandpress.com. Yeah, so I suppose there's one thing I kind of know a decent bit about the background of what's going on. Uh, and I understand that the main team, there's four people in the main team. Yep. And everyone is spread around the globe. And it's kind of, it's interesting for me actually in terms of this is that everyone who who is involved i would say is i don't say insulting or denigrating but is in the enthusiastic amateur section of hand balance and it's kind of interesting that it's like none of the people involved are professional hand balancers in terms of actual performance skill well they might have professional like sonia teaches obviously and lisa organizes workshops but it's this kind of community infrastructure is very interesting when it starts building up because say coming from the juggling scene so the the juggling scene in circus has the most unique subsection of the circus thing in terms of community events like they were running conventions since 1953 at the first kind of ones they have big events that will be running like thousands of people multiple shows but this is also facilitated that the skill level of amateur jugglers is actually one of these things that surpasses professionals. It's quite common you'll find people who are amateurs. They they never perform for money, or they might perform a little bit, but they would be the people setting the world record, setting setting the trends, coming up with the new styles, coming up with the new expression, all this kind of thing. And it's it's what gets interesting is it's not really these high skill technicians who are doing a lot of the organizing. Some of them are, but generally not. They're just doing it. But it's this infrastructure of very enthusiastic amateur people who want the community to grow are the ones organizing these events. They're organizing the shows. They're organizing the whole infrastructure around the community. So it's kind of interesting just to see that come out of this online collaboration. You have like the four of you who are all around the world who are just like, we're really into this. And we're just going to facilitate other people doing it in some ways. You're make, making stuff happen that no one else would be doing. It's super good. Yeah. And I mean, but the interesting... The last two... Yeah, the interesting thing about this is that we actually, we all met 
more or less online through handstands. So we have yeah. Sonia and myself, we met at a handstand factory retreat that I'd organized for the very first um the the very first handstand factory intensive actually for Push Harder. Mm-hmm. That's how we met. And then we have um, Katie, who is our head of design. She does um, the layout and all our branding. It's it's beautiful. You can see it across our channels. Um, so she's she's a yoga teacher and works very closely with Sonia. Actually, that's yeah. She, Katie and I actually met because um, we were passing through Portland, where she lives, uh, on our trip around the world. And uh, she saw that we were traveling and interviewing all of these hand balancers. And she saw that we were there and she reached out to me. And we have been really good friends ever since. Yeah, and that's, that's the beauty of, of online hands-on friends. Um, and then we have Emma, who we actually, I, I met her because she was training with Mikhail. Um, and I was in the process of building up the affiliate program for Handstand Factory. And I reached out to her if she wanted to be an affiliate. Um, that's that's how we started chatting, and she's actually since um, become our affiliate manager for Handstand Factory. So she entered Motion and Pulse, about, I think eight eight months ago or something. Um, and then when when we began working on the Handstand Press, Katie, Sonia, and myself, um, we asked Emma if she wanted to be our social media manager. So that's that's where she is. Um, and then we have more people from Motion and Pulse working on the project as well. We have. Um, Sophie, who's actually my cousin, who she does all the layout for the Hansen factory, technically, normally. So if, if you've ever seen the Hansen factory manuals, that's, that's her work. Um, and all the branding of Hansen factory would be from her. Yeah. At this point, I'd just like to actually point out to everyone, this isn't a handstand factory project or it's like, <laughs> not that it it's like, it's, like it, but yeah, it's, it's the infrastructure behind it. So Motion Impulse is the infrastructure behind Anton Factory and me and Mikhail are the content and course creators and all that. But these are the ones, once again, it comes down to facilitating me and Mikhail to do our thing is what Motion Impulse does. And so the team behind it are now doing this project separately using all their know-how. Yeah. So it's that kind of, yeah. once again, enthusiastic Enthusiastic amateurs and people who are into it have like facilitated us to do our thing, and now they're just doing something. Yeah, like, else. We, like we, me and Emmett, we don't have any like uh, content input directly into this. So yeah. I think that's also important to just put a point out. That, like it, uh, these are separate projects in a yeah. sense, and I'm really happy to see that. Which yeah. is why it was very important for us also in in the first few issues to not actually have any articles written by Emmett. I mean, we've interviewed Mikael for the shows and times. I of feel COVID. left out. You, you will <laughs> you will come in um but yeah because it because the idea is to actually have a completely separate platform where multiple different voices from all over the community have space whereas hands on factories obviously it's Emmett and Mikkel bringing out their their views and their you know their teaching um which is very valuable but then having this other platform and while it is the team behind um that that also facilitates it it's not connected in that way yeah, it's just good. So, just disclaimer yeah. on that. Me and Mikhail are not writing any more articles. We have enough writing to do. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, I just wanted to go back to that um, enthusiastic amateur thing you were talking about um, because I think it's it's really important. Just in in terms of the the circus community, what what Emmett was um, discussing is, I actually got into circus because I was going to circus convention. Emmett dragged me along when we when we met about eight years ago. Um, and just this being surrounded by um, other people that do the thing that you're interested in. And you can always see there's the really, really high skilled people that, you know, come to these conventions and share their knowledge and, and are there and um, and do their training. But then you have the people that, you know, spend their time organizing these events. Their skill is not as high, but there's just as much room in the community for them as well. And that's what I I really love about, you know, handstands on the internet. There's there's people of all levels giving input and that's kind of bringing that into the real world, I think is, is one of the things that the magazine is trying to do. And like myself, for example, I think that's that's kind of what you were asking. Like yeah. I'm not I'm not a very high skilled hand balancer at all. In fact, it's always that question, when do you start calling yourself a hand balancer? Um that's a that's a really interesting thing you could probably discuss that's in some be, other episode as well. That's definitely one of those ones you're gonna need to uh yeah, unpack that can of worms. I've seen a... When do you call yourself a well, hand balancer? I mean, generally. I've, I've seen it basically like 
railed from like until you can do a figa and earn money showing people your figa you're not a hand bouncer you just do handstands and yes everything in between and uh i have my own views we could probably cover that in the podcast michael yeah, it's really yeah, I mean, it's it I, I guess it depends on the on who defines it and I, yeah. I think I think that the definition now I mean nowadays it's more just up to like however you'd you'd place the term. I mean yeah. Yeah. I think I think I think the term was clear uh in the pre internet era since then it was like you'd you'd you like the, the term would be kind of an exclusively sort of circus uh context person. But yeah. nowadays it isn't anymore and like to me that's not a problem. Yeah, me too. I think it's kinda of like I'm there's a difference between, say, a climber and someone who goes climbing. I go climbing occasionally, but I'm not a climber. Why? Because it's not my main activity. Whereas, like, if your main activity is I train for handstands and all my training is kind of focused on that in my spare time, even if it's only three times a week, I would say that. Then you can go, okay, I'm a hand balancer, and that's my thing. I think, well, yeah, once again, we'll probably save that for later. Anyway, back to that's the magazine. <laughs> so we're beginning to get to the end. So if I want to get this magazine onto my onto my coffee table not that i have a coffee table but if i had a coffee table on this thing now actually tell me more about the paper i'm gonna spill no let's face it mikhail is gonna spill his coffee on this <laughs> magazine is it coffee proof i don't spill spill coffee on my paper usually yeah on your origami I, I paper. Have, not on I your have, origami paper but i see i have spilled paint on this one but that was on purpose um well, the paper is definitely going to be kind of, I'm looking at untreated paper. So it'll like just soak up your coffee, Miguel, and you can still mm. do a handstand on the magazine if you so wish, because it will not be drenched by coffee. It's kind of interesting. You could uh, have yeah. a Mikhail coffee stained variation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you you could make your, your coffee like, like, art. Like s- signature. <laughs> coffee art yeah like ra- radical coffee art maybe that's what i should start doing you could do that anyway so we'll we're it. already doing it without knowing <laughs> yeah so anyway i want to get my hands on this magazine how do i do it right now yeah. you can go, go to the kickstarter to our crowdfunding campaign on kickstarter it started yesterday so by the time this comes out on thursday it'll be about four days in and we have an early bird going for the first week of the Kickstarter, where you can get your magazine to a highly reduced price. Um, and this Kickstarter will run for 30 days. So you go to Kickstarter, you type in Handstand Press Magazine, and you will find it. But okay. we'll also put a link in the show notes. No, we'll put a link in the show notes, obviously, and we'll share the thing. The main question, though, is like after the Kickstarter runs, uh, the thing. People are listening to this podcast in the future, like to pretend. So we're documenting COVID times and all this. So in two years' time, where can I get this magazine? What is the web address and where is it? Uh, Thehandstandpress.com is our website. Instagram is handstandpress.magazine and same on Facebook. Okay. Awesome. No, I'm really looking forward to uh, get my hands on it. And I'd like to say one more really important thing. If you want yeah. to get involved, we have submissions uh, on articles, opinion pieces, um, anything written that pertains to handstands. Um, we also have submissions open for all kinds of photography. We're always looking for really nice cover pictures, but also just hand balancing photography that can go into the magazine. Um, and we also would love any type of illustrations. So anything, if you sketch, if you draw, if you spill your coffee in form of handstands, submit it to us on thehandstandpress.com and we'll be very, very happy to consider it for publication. Awesome. Yeah, so if you want to get involved, you have it out. Yeah, I look forward to seeing what comes out. I look forward to writing opinion pieces disagreeing with people. I disagree because that's not how I do things. Your thing is different, therefore not as good as mine, and this kind of thing. Uh, other than that, thank you, girls, for coming on to the show. We had a good little chat today. It was I hope a pleasure. Else. Yeah, thank you so much for having yes. us. Yeah. I never thought Sweet. I'd actually end up on this podcast myself, so <laughs> glad to be here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, other than that, we have been the Hanson cast. I'm Emmett Lewis, and you're joined today with Mikael Christiansen, Elisa Missol, and Sonia. 
Smith Novak. Smith Novak. I was like, <laughs> don't say you you don't know my name. Well, I was just going to go Sonia Sonji, and I was like, no, wait, that's her nickname. <laughs> and then, like, all kicked into my head is your like uh, your little jingle. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh! Your hands yeah. have. Uh, we should probably have used that as the jingle today. <laughs> You're lucky it didn't save it, but the, uh, the, the yeah. Intro. Upside down, in Sonji land. Yeah, so that just sorry, that just froze me there for a second. I was like, <laughs> don't sing the jingle, don't sing the jingle. <laughs> <laughs> Never gonna get rid of it. Yeah. Anyway, thank you girls for coming on the show. If you want to support this project and it's awesome, please check it out on Kickstarter or please, if you're listening in the future, pick up a copy of the magazine. It's one of those things that will be awesome on your shelf and it'll be awesome to sort of have persistent content for when like the global reset comes and the internet gets shut off <laughs> and you're just stuck with just books. Uh, other than that we've been good you've been great thank you for listening in Uh, we are the handstand cast bye cheers bye every day is upside down in sunny land the handstand cast is brought to you by handstand factory and is produced by motion impulse thanks for tuning in you can find a full transcript of each episode along with the show notes and any relevant references on handstandfactory.com slash podcast thanks to Isaac for editing and Jordan for transcriptions Music by Daniel Horwath. If you want to support the show, you can buy us a coffee on buymeacoffee.com or consider starting one of our Handstand Factory online programs. Links are in the show notes.